So I had a fortuitous happening this week in preparation for my upcoming birthday. I'm turning 42, the point at which I learned the life to answer the universe and everything. Yeah, that thing. I posted it in some of the beer groups I'm in in Facebook, asking places to or recommendations for where to find good saisons. Um, I mean, I could go to Total Wine and get Saison DuPont, which is the gold standard of Saisons everywhere, except Total Wine is not the gold standard for uh, caring for their beers. And while their selection there is pretty dang good, um, you, you just can't count on them always having been cared for well during shipping and storage. And in particular, they store them on their shelves unrefrigerated. And some of those cans are really old, which, you know, for a double stout, it's not a problem. For an IPA or a Pilsner, yeah, that's a bit of a problem. Anyways, I wanted a non, um, you know, I wanted a more, a better cared for beer experience to select some uh, good beers for the party I'm planning to throw for myself. Um, really, it's just an excuse to have guys over, friends, and uh, have a good chat. Anyways, one person who commented noted that they actually run a beer subscription delivery service in the area. Brian Balland of Pack Mule, which you can find at packmule.beer online, delivers beers uh, all around Washington State from breweries, not just in Washington State. And as I was talking with him, I met up with him on Thursday outside the Mount Olympus Pap Room at the Tumwater Craft District here in the Tumwater Olympia area. He actually gifted me one Saison amongst the various ones that I purchased or that I subscribed to. The Fair Isle Cherry Polly, which is a black Saison with cherries. Now, there's various styles of beers where the, the gold standard is one color, but there might be variations and a very different color of the beer. And uh, well, this is definitely one of those, that's for sure. <laughs> So, I am not going to rehash what a Saison is, except to say it is a classic style of a wild ale. Typically, it's brewed using very light colored malts, and the resulting beer is straw or gold, um, possibly as deep as amber, but not really. Most of the time, yellow, straw, gold, very pale. This is definitely not any of those colors. So what is a black Saison? Well, Saison, wild ale. Black, well, where does the color in the beer come from? It comes from the color of the malts, generally the roasting level of the malts that went into the beer. So being a black Saison, this is a wild, a classically fermented wild ale made with very, very dark malts. And I mean, very dark. This is, the, the can says it's unfiltered. So there's, there's no light at all coming through. Like. I wouldn't say it's black, but it is very dark, very dark brown. Even the head is a bit brown, uh, tan colored. So this is a uh, our black Saison with Washington grown Montmorency cherries and fermented with our house blend of wild and feral yeasts and bacteria by Fair Isle. I have not had Fair Isle before. In fact, I don't need know that prior to Thursday, I had even heard of that brewery, so all sorts of new things here. Major shout out to Brian Balland before I get into this. Um, if you like quality beers from breweries you have not heard of, or breweries you have, generally around the Washington and Oregon area, but um, I bought a beer from him from uh, St. Louis as well. So. He gets out, or he, he doesn't get them himself, but he gets them through his partnerships with uh, breweries in the area. If you like that sort of thing, um, look them up. Packmule. And the various things for this, uh, for this beer. But smelling it. So this is definitely going to hold towards the, the tart side. Um, there's definitely a... a um, oh, what was that smell? 
there's a black tea like aroma. So yeah, I'm, I'm smelling the, the tart cherries or a tart cherry smell aroma. Um, but also there, then there's this black tea and maybe maybe a hint of smokiness almost, which if you if you roast your grains darkly enough using the right methods, you can definitely get smokiness. That's where you get your Roush beers. That's where you get your, your smoked lagers, smoked pilsners. It's from, it's usually that they applied smoke to the grains during the malting process or the roasting process. And really with the, with the cherry and the, the dark grain smells, aromas, it, there's almost a, um, a molasses, like a fruit molasses. Like a, they, they took the cherry juice and then, and then boiled it down and kept boiling it till it was a thick molasses-like consistency, that, that kind of smell. But really, that, uh, <laughs> that black tea aroma is really, really interesting. I, I like what it portends. And really, I'm not going to say that they, they intended for it to have a black tea. I'm going to say that it's possibly the combination of the smokiness with the, the dark fruitiness of the cherry that is producing a black tea-like aroma. <sighs> yeah. Oh, there's a smoke to it. Oh my goodness. So I was talking with my friend Jonathan this morning at church, and he was talking how he found a Roush beer, a, a smoked beer that he really liked. And uh, so we were talking about some of the breweries in the area that make that. There's definitely smoke in here. There's definitely smoke in here. That is freaking amazing. It has generally been a relatively windy spring here. So while I'm trying to record videos outside, sorry for the wind noise. Um, anyways. Smoked beers, delicious, really good. I've had smoked pilsners, I've had uh, smoked lagers, well, pilsners are lagers, um, and, and uh, they're super good and I love them. I would not have ever expected in my life that someone would have smoked a, a Saison, but here we are, right? Enjoy the beer that is, and gosh darn it, this is a good beer. This is a very interesting beer. It's tasty, but nothing's like, punching or speaking out of turn it's all really balanced there's a lot of layers going on there's a lot of subtlety to enjoy and yeah i'm definitely enjoying this cherry tartness and then that same just a hint of that um like cherry molasses uh nice intense kind of dark note then this smokiness that comes through and this smokiness just hangs on forever. Like I'm still tasting it in my mouth 10, 15 seconds after I swallowed, maybe even 20 or 30 seconds. I can't remember when I last swallowed waiting for wind to stop. This is a really good beer. This is a delicious beer. This is a unique beer. You're not gonna find very many dark Saisons, black Saisons. Okay, yeah, so I came inside because the wind was being really annoying. It would make noise in our oak tree and whatever this other tree is, and that was actually when it was quietest, um, but as soon as that started slowing down, a breeze would come in over my shoulder and blow right on the mic, and I'm really sorry about that. Um, it's been a particularly windy spring and now early summer here in the Northwest, um, and frankly, I was getting a little bit frustrated. Anyways, so I've smelt it, I've dealt it, something like that. No, I didn't deal anything. Um, so flavors that are going on here. Let's reset my brain. It's so good. This is such a, this is such a good beer. Okay, so, um, Flavors going on. You get the tartness of the cherry. You have this, this um, uh, cherry molasses, like I mentioned. You know, it's it's like cherry juice baked down, boiled down until it's this super thick, concentrated, 
slightly burned um, syrup, sh sweet, sugary syrup. Uh, intense, right? But it's just a hint of it. So it's like tart cherry, and then it's like, oh, uber dark cherry. And then um, you kind of have this, have this black tea note as the smokiness comes in. And, oh, and that smokiness hangs out for a long time. Like it's still, it's still there around kind of the sides and the middle of my mouth. There's a little bit of a nuttiness to it as well. Um, I've tasted that before in other beers. And I'm wondering if it, if it has to do, if it's a characteristic of a particular malt. Um, uh, I mean, generally toasted grains are going to have a nutty character. So it might just be generic to malts. Um, this, is, this is a beer that has some legs. It's... It's interesting, like it's a unique take on the style. It's a unique take on a, on a good style. It's a good take. It's a masterful take on a good style. And like the length of it, it's just, it just keeps going. It's, it's, <laughs> I'm gushing. I'm sorry. So anyways, this beer, thanks to Mr. Brian Belland, of Pack Mule, packmule.beer. Look them up. Seriously, do it. Access to super amazing beers that I had no clue existed and that are totally, totally worth your drinking time. And that is time I'm now going to spend. I am going to savor the rest of this beer. And I'm going to wish that I had Jonathan here to share it with me because. Um, I think it might tickle his fancy a bit too. And actually, Paul likes smoked beers too. So shout out to Jonathan and Paul on this one too. Anyways, this is me, Matthew. I have been drinking, and perhaps gushing over, Fair Isles Cherry Polly. And I'll catch y'all on the flip side. Mm -hmm.